What the f Did you guys hear that? Bro, Kendrick he went just, in! Bro, he just, he ripped everyone to Bro, he literally dropped bro, a control literally part literally two, bro. Just... That was our first reaction to Kendrick Lamar's feature on the song Like That. If you want to catch our full reaction to that song and the whole album, check out the link in our pinned comment or in our description. But we have a mission in this video, and that's going to be to talk about Kendrick Lamar's verse and the words within that verse because this will shake up the fucking rap game. Guys, if you're new here, smash that subscribe button because we will be keeping you guys up to date with this entire feud situation, whatever you want to call it, as well as the rollout for We Don't Trust You by Future and Metro Boomin. What a crazy night, man. But it's time to break this down. What bro. a crazy night. Who the fuck saw this coming, bro? No this one. is unreal. No one, this Kendrick unreal. Lamar in 2024, after so many years of sneak disses and back and forth, he is shooting directly at Drake and J. Cole is getting caught in the crosshairs. Let's talk about this. So to give some context, Future and Metro Boomin decide to drop a collab album, highly anticipated within the community, people hailing it as what probably would end up being a trap classic, too soon to say, of course. And by the way, we are going to be dropping an album review in a few days. But out of nowhere, you get a Kendrick Lamar feature. What was your first thought? Well, listen, honestly, as soon as the verse started, I was just so confused because Kendrick was the last person that I anticipated to be on this studio album. And then, like, you start going through the bars and you're hearing the type of tone he's going at and it's like, where is he going with this? And then after that, you start getting some bars and he's absolutely going at Drake and J. Cole in this verse. Even just the way that he's coming at them is absolutely incredible. I mean, what's cool about this verse in particular is that hip-hop needed this. Hip-hop absolutely needed this because especially when you look at the competitive level of the genre, like... It's not there. It's non-existent. But not only that, but this is the essence of the genre. You know, looking back at classic feuds like, let's say, Nas and Jay-Z, let's say even looking at all the Eminem disses, you know, looking at all of these feuds in rap history, this is what the genre is made of. You're not going to get this on R&B. You're not going to get this in alternative rock. This is what rap is made of. So to be able to witness this in real time in 2024 is absolutely fucking legendary. Bro. I cannot express how happy I am that this is happening right now. And just looking at the way that everything is positioned, dude, like imagine going at a prime J. Cole and a Drake right now. Imagine like imagine, imagine having, that, like, the, having the balls to do that. This was a fucking ballsy this move. This was a statement. Verse. This was a huge, statement huge, verse. huge moment for hip hop. This is like a control part two by Kendrick, just that he's choosing to take aim at the top dogs, the guys he's always been compared to. I want to start breaking this down before we talk about what this means for the future. Um, Kendrick Lamar went absolutely crazy. He said, fuck sneak this in first person shooter. I hope they came with three switches saying that they're going to need three guns to actually take him down. Like he's a big dog and three switches, maybe even referring to the beat switches within the song. Maybe that's a double entendre or maybe I'm reaching. There's I don't only know. A beat switches, one beat switch within the song. Yeah. There's but, two different beats. Yeah. But maybe he's playing into the idea that there's beat switches on the, on the track. Um, after that, once you go further into it, this was the one that um, that was really crazy to me. For all your dogs getting buried, that's a K with all these nines. He gonna see Pet Cemetery. So, of course, he's referencing Drake's album title for all the dogs. But he's saying that he's going to bury the dogs. And he's saying that's a K with all of these nines. So, he's mentioning different types of weapons slash guns. But he's also talking about canine dogs. That's a K with all these nines. The wordplay is fucking out of Absolutely. this world. And just when you think it's over, you go to this next line. Uh, motherfucker, the big three, it's just big me. You know, just talking about how regardless of what anyone thinks about this rap game right now, I'm the only one and I'm in a completely different league. And that's what I love about this verse is that it's aggressive. It's in your face. And you know what's going to be cool about this? To see the way that they're going to respond to this. Absolutely. This is, the, the ball is in their also, court Also, right Prince now. outliving Michael Jackson because, of course, over the years... Kendrick has been compared more so to Prince, and Drake has been compared more so to Michael Jackson. So he's saying that he's going to outlive him career-wise, as well as saying that his best work is a light pack. Pretty much saying that, like, I'm the one here with the discography. I'm the one here with the classics. My discography compared to yours, we're, we're in different leagues, buddy, which I disagree with to some extent. I think that Drake does have classic records. Um, but this is going to be... This is going to be interesting. Okay, this so is going to shake... 
the fucking game. Bro. That's what I love about this is that like we needed this competitive nature back. Remember, like you know, back in the mid 2010s when everyone was just going at it and yep. it was just super competitive. The genre was alive and it was happening. I never thought I would see this again. I never thought I, I, I never thought again. I, I never and, thought and, I would see and this again. And it was again. devastating because, like you were saying earlier, the 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 genre itself was built off of lyrical sparring. You go all the way back to like Run DMC, Sucker MCs, like. Literally, music from the 80s was about going at other rappers and having to prove that you're better than the next guy in line. Absolutely. And that's what Kendrick Lamar is doing here. Um, and it's so crazy that we get it now in 2024 after years and years of them going at each other. We never would have thought that it actually would come to a point where Kendrick is taking direct shots at Drake. And I feel like we were kind of disagreeing about this you feel like Kendrick's going at both of them I feel like Kendrick is really taking aim at Drake and that J. Cole is just getting caught in the no, crosshairs because let he me finish it, no, he's, he let, knows let, let me finish J. Cole is getting caught in the crosshairs because he has to talk about the big three and he has to eliminate the other two threats to be like I'm the only one I'm the goat but in the end if you look at every other line it's pointed at Drake I understand what you're saying but you're bringing him in the can of worms you brought him in Regardless of how you brought him in, you could have brought him in a bit nicer or a bit worse, whatever the case may be. Drake and J. Cole right now are in the same boat. They both have to respond. So, okay, so that, that's what I'm You think they both have to respond? Oh, they both have to. Fuck yeah. Are you serious or what? He just brought them both. That's what I'm saying, dude. You know, even if you look at the verse, okay, like the bars are whatever. Like, no, they're not I, whatever. The no, no, bars no, no. are serious. No, they're serious bars. But I mean, like, put the bars aside right now and think, like, think ahead at this point. They're both in this. This is the first time we've ever seen like these three guys go at it competitively. Yep. And that is a scary thing to see right now in 2024. Because Kendrick opened up a can of worms. And what I love too... Up, hold on a second. Yeah. I want to explain something as well. It. When you look at the way that Kendrick Lamar did this, it comes out of nowhere. You're finding these guys you know, on tour, whatever the case may be. They just released one of the biggest songs of 2023 with First Person Shooter. The chemistry's there. They're making incredible music together. It really seemed like everything was kind of like you know, slow, like, you know, smoke on the water, like, just still. And then all of a sudden, he just fucking comes through and rips it. Like, this is what hip-hop needed. This is genuinely what hip-hop needed. It needed a shock like this. And like like you're just saying, I mean, Kendrick is a rapper who was totally off the grid, released his album two years ago, stayed quiet after tour, didn't pop out anywhere. Well, and he did some fashion appearances and stuff oh, like yeah. that. He's been uploading on his Facebook. But just stuff, to say, it, it just it felt like he was in a different phase it, in his it, career. It just you felt like it was the most shocking way that he could have attacked them was on a future Metro album with with a hidden feature. It was insane. But what I love the most about this verse and what it represents is the essence of hip hop, the rawness of hip hop, where it's not about oh, well, we went for the same girl or something within the streets got us to dissing each other on record. No, this is about the sport of hip-hop and no other rappers are going at each other for the sake of making a point of I am lyrically stronger than you are or I am more dominant than you are, whatever it is. This is for the sake of the sport and for the sake of steel sharpening steel Kendrick is going to bring some of the best lyrical performances out of J. Cole and Drake because they have to shape up this is a fucking top five rapper of all time going at your head you have no choice but to suit up and attack that well, microphone not only that but it's like there's been so many sublims and talk about the top of the the top of the throne for example like even if you go back to January 28th the way that J. Cole ended off you know that song in the intro on 2014 Forest Hills Drive like this has been a thing of competitive edge between all of them and over the years like drake's low-key like he, he's been putting his word out there in songs and he's been talking about people coming at him and lo and behold you have a random friday friday i should say early morning yeah you know this release is on march 22nd then you're just getting a, a verse of the year contender it really is this is an historic song for the genre so historic absolutely historic so you're catching j cole in album mode you're catching jake uh, j cole who has been shooting out competitive bars about killing people on features and about being the number one guy, numero UNO. And then you have Drake, who has been tested before, is coming off of the heels of what he himself called a loss in a rap battle. They both have all the reasons to go forward with this, but at the same time, they probably don't want to do it together because no. then it's uneven. There we go. Then it's yeah. uneven. They gotta... It has to be their own on their own front. But that's what the mind fuck is right now. That's why this chess move from Kendrick is so fucking genius because you're putting them both in a position to come back and have to answer this. They have to answer this. And it's like, who does it first? I, 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 I think this is what happens. Because it was so direct that Drake, Drake needs to respond like 
immediately, like within days. So I think you're going to get a Drake record. That's my prediction. Aiming at Kendrick. And I think what J. Cole does, because he was sort of just like... No, he was... He was sort of like a bystander within this. I think he gives a couple of lines on the fall off. That's what I think. Because you you really think they're both going to come at him with tracks right away? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if it's tracks or I don't know if J. Cole dropped something maybe on um, the Might Delete Later volumes. That's another opportunity. Think about that. That's what the mind fuck is. Like, how does J. Cole go silent until his album? But they both need to respond. How does how does J. Cole go silent until his album? He doesn't. Maybe it's coming sooner than we think. Who knows? I don't he know. doesn't. He, I, I listen. I just I'm I'm not sure how this plays out. It, like he literally just fucked everything up. Who wins? Oh, who's gonna win this? It, it's Man, too soon it, to it, say. It, you have to yeah, hear the yeah, tracks. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to hear the tracks. I have to hear the tracks. I have to see what happens because I, I've seen. I've seen this situation where like a rapper will open up the can of worms and then like it either goes his way or it goes the other way. That's what I'm trying to say though, is that it's it's too uneven to call. I'm just saying the way that Kendrick Lamar came at both of them tonight, this is legendary. This is legendary. It, it, and, and now and, and the thing too is that he, he set the bar high. The bar is high. These verses that have to come after this from both of these guys have to be top tier level. Or it's 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 game over. I will say this. I think that Kendrick in this situation, when you when you poke that bear. He is going to fucking claw at you. But I will say this. This verse, as phenomenal as it is, both J. Cole and Drake are capable of topping it. Yes, now, absolutely. are they capable of topping what Kendrick does next? That's, that I don't that's know. That's a completely different But this question. is toppable. Like, it is toppable. There, there should be no debate in their mind. They should go at this. I mean, Drake... The is genre different. would be in flames bro. <laughs> you see it's gonna be chaos and we're here for that fucking chaos just because you need it you absolutely you, need it. you absolutely need it it was too it was too like n- n- not that i want to see fucking like you know tension all the time or whatever the case may be but like it was too less a fan yeah but yeah like this this is like okay let's let's keep pushing the genre Fuck forward yeah. and let's keep showing why like this is the best genre to exist right now it is it, this is the reason why it's fucking you, this sometimes is, this is espn shit you're watching like th- this is like t- like forces going at each other this doesn't even make sense bro it, it's good for the sport sometimes you need someone to step on your toes bro like think Absolutely. about all the rivalries in sports think about all the rivalries in hip hop itself like we needed this to come to sort of a culmination of everything that's been building up all these years we needed it and we got it, it. guys let us yeah, know down in the really, comments, guys. Say, I'm, what are I'm your speechless. thoughts? I'm speechless. I'm fucking yeah, speechless. Yeah, we were speechless in the reaction, guys, as you could see if you watch it. But let us know in your in your own words, in the comments section, what do you think happens next? What were your thoughts on the verse itself? And what content do you guys want to see c- us cover next? And, of course, an album review is dropping very soon. So stay tuned for all of that. And smash the, the subscribe button for more content. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you soon. Peace.